What's up people, my name is Anton and welcome to September. Today I'm going to show you guys a really quick video on how you can generate normal maps from anything if you're working in the texturing process in C4D uh, and you realise that the bump isn't quite doing enough, there's a really easy way inside Photoshop that you can generate the maps and add that extra bit of detail to your 3D renders. So starting here we've got our initial scene, obviously this is an untextured basketball that I just figured I'd use as an example. We've got pretty good freedom here with how we can rotate this and start working off it. So if we just hop straight into the node editor, I believe we have a material here, but it's a C4D material. We just need to delete this real quick and we can go about making some super quick um, base materials. So if we open this, we've got it separated luckily into the grip and the ball and I believe it's already UV'd. Um, so we can just add a quick material onto the ball. So if we hop in here, uh, we can take a look at where the materials are saved. This is one I made earlier, so I'm going to delete that for the sake and start importing the textures that we do have. So on this one, I believe we had the bump, diffuse and specular. And we can drag those right in here and see the kind of look that we get purely from those. Um, I believe the model itself is a little low geometry, but hopefully it shouldn't have too much of an effect. We can super quickly just get our setup working, um, drag a HDRI in so we get some light reflections and see how we're working here if we just head to commercial locations get something like this and set it to aces you can see we've got our we've got our ball here whoop whoop but but sweet so real quick we'll just drag this into a subdivision surface so we're working something a little bit nicer um, and you can see our base geometry here quite well so all texture just make sure we're saving uh, and we can hop in here and start connecting some of these nodes up so we head into the node editor we can find our diffuse make sure we're setting that to aces and we'll get a pretty good idea of how important a normal map is when creating this look so we can head into diffuse there make sure this is saved into our bump channel and get this in the specular just realizing that we need to make sure we're setting this to glossy here and have this in the specular channel and you can see we're getting some bump off here, but it's not quite enough to get the kind of look that we're going for. And it looks a little, a little bit slightly off. So what we can do, which is important, is finding where our diffuse channel is. So we can find our diffuse texture. You see, this is what we're working with. You need to right click on that and hit open with and then click on Photoshop. And there are actually, believe it or not, a few 3D or rather you need to Make sure we're deleting this. This is the one I did earlier. <laughs> uh, and we can drag our diffuse in and start from scratch. There are some 3D functionalities in Photoshop. So if we have our texture and we head over to filter 3D and then generate normal map, you see we have the ability, it will pull up a little window and we can actually start taking a look at a 3D version of our ball and adjust how much we want these normal maps to actually show. So this is the result here we're getting. And if we tweak these, you can start to see that by tweaking these values, you sort of gauge which parts of the image show right out. So I seem to find that having the highs up works quite well, but you want the mids too, right? You don't want you don't want there to be this like almost like mountains on the lower geometry scale here. It looks a little too much. So maybe better to zoom out a little bit. Maybe, maybe zoom in, sort of see what kind of effect you want. Um, bring the lows up tends to dull those out a little bit, which is a good sign. And you can start to maybe that maybe the highs are, t are too high here, for example. So we can move that back up, and then drag this down a little bit. Yeah, so something like this. Um, we can see that we're getting the ridges, but if you looked at an actual basketball, you'd notice there are like little microscopic balls. What I believe has happened is this might actually be inverted. So if we were to invert the height, you start to see that this is actually more of a basketball look here that we're going for. So you could move the highs up a little bit like that. Bear in mind, this is obviously going to add to the bump as well. So you don't want to have this going too crazy. Then you could hit OK. And just as an extra step, I'm going to export this and see what this looks like first. But I'm bearing in mind that it might lack a little bit of detail. So if we just save this as our normal map, um, we'll really be able to sweep right back into Photoshop, head into our file, drag the normal map in, and we'll be able to see the kind of effect that we're having. I might 
might brighten up the uh, HDRI here for this reason. Um, set the power to about two. Um, and if I disconnect the fuse and the bump channels, we can take our normal and drag that in. And you'll see this effect that we get. Now this is actually far better than my previous, previous attempt. But if we were to take out the camera real quick and just zoom in, you can see we're lacking a, lacking a slight amount of detail. And I don't think it's the fault of the geometry. It may be the fault of the um, just resolution of the textures. It looks pretty good, I'd say. But if we look here, you can see we start to get some ridges. Um, and when it's blurred out, it may get a little too much. So what is a shout is if you head in here and you rasterize this layer to filter noise. Make sure you've got monochromatic unticked and you add a very slight amount. What it will do is add a little bit of variation to that normal. Set around 10%, hit file, export, quick export as PNG one more time. Hit normal two, so you're exporting as a separate map. You can head back in here, hop back in your material, click on no data. Uh, and head in here super quickly open the file editor, head back into normal and you'll see you'll get a similar map but with a little bit of noise and it's this little bit of noise which tends to add a little more uh, to your materials I'd say um, you can even go about say you're looking at the resolution here and you realize well this really needs a little more detail it's a normal map which has the variation as all displacement to your object so you could head to image size even and start doubling if you set this to pixels um, make this 4096 by 4096 um, it would double the resolution of the normal map specifically and in conjunction with your albedo which should be the regular resolution um, it will add detail and add that little bit extra to your geometry but for now I say this looks good so if we go about connecting the rest of our objects get the bump in here nicely and then the specular connected I'd even say the bump may be the reason that this looks a little, little off. But we can we can go about turning that down a little bit, maybe 0.25, and then head back to our original scene. And you can see we've got a pretty good normal map basketball there, which we can then go about using. So having said that, obviously this is applicable, applicable in any situation really with any material, but specifically with stuff like this, it tends to really shine, um, especially on the logos and stuff like that. You can see we're catching edges now. And that is a really quick and easy way for applying normal maps in any scenario. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, hope you guys learned something new and um, I'll see you in the next episode.